Hi guys, this is I'm Stuck, and today we are carrying on with our Tudor series and we are going to learn about the pretenders and the rebellions which occurred in Henry VII's reign, particularly in the early stages. Now obviously Henry VII, as we've mentioned in previous videos, had a fairly weak um, claim to the throne, which meant that he was struck with um, people trying to pretend they were the rightful heir and there were rebellions against him, mainly due to tax raises as we will learn later in this video. Now the five people or rebellions that we will be looking at today um, are, include Viscount Lovell, Lambert Simnel, the Yorkshire Rebellion, Perkin Warbeck and finally the Cornish Rebellion, all which offer different threats to the throne and we will um, also show how Henry managed to deal with these threats. So first of all we'll do these in chronological order and the first rebellion was the Lovell Stafford Rebellion. Now, the aim of the Lovell Stafford Rebellion was to overthrow Henry VII and replace him with some Yorkist claimant. Now, Francis Lovell um, was the main person in control of this and he inherited the title of a baron at a young age, um, between seven or nine years old, it's not exactly known. And he was a supporter of Richard III, a threat friend and an ally. And he helped Richard III fight against the Yorkists at Bosworth Field in the Battle of Bosworth, in which obviously they were unsuccessful. Now as a result, it meant that Lovell fled to Colchester after the Battle of Bosworth, and this is where he organised the first rising against Henry VII. Now the rebellion was to be taking place in the North Riding of Yorkshire, however there was also another rising being planned at the same time by Humphrey Stafford. However, this is where we start to learn about Henry's important network of people around him. And his spy network managed to observe Lovell and Stafford, and they, um, they managed to order their capture before there was the planned rebellions. Now, Lovell did manage to flee, which meant that he was actually later involved in the Lambert Simnel um, rebellion. However, Stafford was captured and he was um, exec executed. Now this is an example of how Henry showed good leadership and how um, the rebellion um, failed despite the fact that it was only a year into Henry's reign and at this time he could have been quite fragile as he wasn't able to completely consolidate his power as yet. So the next one we're going to learn about offered a little bit more of a threat to Henry um, as he wasn't able to deal with it so easily. And this uh, rebellion took place in 1487, and it was Lambert Simnel. Now, the causes of this rebellion was the Yorkist dissatisfaction. Now, in the rebellion, the Yorkists attempted to place a pretender on the throne. A pretender is basically someone who says they are somebody who they are not, as it makes um, in the name, you could probably guess that. Now, Lambert Simnel, he pretended to be the Earl of um, Warwick, who was locked up in the Tower of London. However, at start, his, his story was actually that he was one of the princes in the tower. Now, if you don't know the story about the prince of the tower, the prince, what, the prince of the tower are basically people who were locked up by Richard III. Um, Richard III's nephews, he knocked one of them up, um, and there were two boys who were believed to have died. However, it is um, unknown exactly what happened with them. So he pretended that he was one of them who were obviously meant to be the rightful king to the throne and would have definitely had a, a much larger claim to the throne than Henry VII himself. So the threat of this rebellion was fairly high due to the, the um, foreign support that was raised for the rebellion. Now, although there was a lack of support in England for reasons such as um, the lack of finance, the um, lack of desire for another war, um, the, the fact that all of the main threats were locked up or killed. There were a lot of foreign support, um, particularly for Margaret of Burgundy, who paid for 2,000 troops. So this meant that the rebels had an army of 8,000 um, in the battle which took place in East Stoke. However, the king did manage to win the battle and Simnel was eventually captured and he wasn't executed, he was just placed in the kitchens as he was such a young boy. The main issue with this rebellion was probably the lack of support within England, um, so despite the foreign support, they never managed to get the um, amount of support they needed within England. So the next one we're going to look at is the Yorkshire Rebellion. 
Now this isn't really a plot necessary to overthrow Henry. This was one of them because of a tax demand which they um, which they were dissatisfied about. Now obviously in the War of the Roses it was between the, uh, the Yorkists and the Lancastrians so there would already be a bit of dissatisfaction within Yorkshire. Now the tax demand from Henry VII was in order to help Brittany. However, Yorkshire felt that Brittany was nothing to do with them. They had a poor harvest in 1488, which caused additional poverty. So what actually happened? So the Earl of Northumberland took this up with the king. Um, but Henry believed that Brittany could be a great place to own and he did not want to be seen as a weak king. This meant that he refused the Earl's request and sent him um, back to nothing. Now. This meant that Northumberland actually told the people that he had um, that he had come back from nothing, and the um, the people of Northumberland actually ended up murdering um, the Earl of Northumberland. So this meant that the rebels rose up behind the leader um, of Sir John Egremont, but this um, rebellion was short lived as the Earl of Surrey, who showed his loyalty to the king, he quickly put down the rebels. So as a result, a new Earl of Northumberland was appointed, but he was only a minor, so the Earl of Surrey became the lieutenant of the land. Um, and as a result, Henry faced no more problems from the north. He also didn't receive the quota from the taxation. So the next one is a big one which lasted for a very long time, and that is Perkin Warbeck. So Perkin Warbeck was a threat for um, a very long time, and he was actually around from 1491 to 1497, and he cost a lot of money for Henry VII to deal with. So he claimed that he was Richard of York, who is the uh, youngest son of um, Edward IV, and he basically moved around many countries um, to this moved around many countries to gain support. And this was again an attempt from the House of York to create a plausible pretender um, in Perkin Warbeck, of course. And as we said, he was one; he pretended to be one of the um, princes in the Tower. Now, the the, the foreign backing that he managed to um, receive was mainly because of a dislike of England. So supporters included um, Emperor Maximilian, James the Fourth of Scotland, Margaret of Burgundy again, and the Charles the Eighth of France. Now there was a fairly high level of support because of um, because of the foreign support, a uh, high level of threat. Sorry. However, there was no support in England again, and his stories were again very unbelievable. So, although he spent a lot of money, Henry actually managed to sign the Treaty of Atapal with France, which meant that the French would have to expel Warbeck from their lands, and he, his spies in Flanders found out that Warbeck was actually from Tournai. So, eventually, he had uh, Perkin Warbeck executed, so he couldn't cause any more threats um, to himself, and Perkin Warbeck never actually managed to have a war, a direct war with Henry VII, which would have been his ultimate aim. So that was one of the people who was around for a long time, and although Henry ended up spending a lot of money, which the country necessarily didn't have on him, it was successful in the end, as Perkin Warbeck wasn't able to overthrow Henry, and he did deal with it in a, a relatively decent manner. So the final one was another rebellion from a place because of a tax demand, and this one was the Cornish Rebellion. Now, the 1497 rebellion was based around another tax demand from Parliament, and the, before the rebellion, Parliament had voted for a tax, which was to finance campaigns against both Perkin Warbeck, who we've just talked about, and this was a, one of the reasons the Perkin Warbeck basically caused this rebellion, um, and the war in Scotland against James IV. However, the Cornish population refused to contribute to these taxes because, these, um, because they thought that these campaigns were completely irrelevant to the daily lives of the Cornish population, considering the fact that the, they were all in the north and Cornwall was right down in the south. So the rebellion took place in May 9, uh, 1497, where the um, rebels set out from Bobmen under the weak leadership of Joseph and Flamach. And this was at the same time as Henry VII had sent an army to the awaited clash in Scotland. So firstly, the, the rebels marched east to gain their recognised leader of Lord Audley. However, 
a big problem with this rebellion was the fact that the leadership was so poor. So Henry was forced to recall his army back um, to London, who were, his army were currently in Scotland, and they fought against the 15,000 men who had reached London by June the 16th. Now this was the most amount of men that any rebellion managed to um, harness together, so it did um, offer a fairly big threat in terms of the amount of men. However, these men were not trained and they were just people who just wanted to fight. They were just angry people. And Lord the Bounty, who led the king's army, had little trouble in defeating these near leadership um, rebels, um, where about a thousand were killed at the Battle of Blackheath, including Lord Audley and Joseph. So, although the rebellion wasn't successful, it was worrying that the rebels had managed to reach London without any opposition. However, it did offer little threat to the throne, although it offered little threat, it did show the fragilities of England at this time period. So, thank you for watching this video, um, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, please also visit my Twitter account, um, I'm Stuck Revision, to see polls and uh, new videos which are coming out. So, thank you, and see you soon. Bye!